Hey guys, welcome back to Practical Leadership. Um, this is Practical Strategies from Leaders, Lesson 4.2. Um, we've all had the opportunity to read the Bible and have the ability to take Jesus and Paul's advice on how to fight in the Spirit, okay? And when I say that, I don't mean something weird like we're drifting away and we're doing some strange thing. I'm saying we're fighting in the in the invisible world that we can't see. That is fighting in the Spirit, okay? We are able to pray and fight the things that are unseen because, you know, we're not fighting against things that are flesh and blood, right? So when we fight against spiritual things, there are tactics we can use that have been made aware to us that work, okay? Now, I was given a whole bunch of things that I'm going to give you in further lessons, okay, that I need to share with you. But I was also told that I needed to survey, ask the question to my leadership team and to some other people that I interact with on a personal basis um, that are from YouTube. That's how they know me. And they seem to be more mature um, believers, okay? So I asked them all what they do to do their daily spiritual warfare, okay? And the answers all came back differently because, you know, we're all different people and, and different things. And then my mind saw the patterns. And I thought it was so interesting because it was like a beautiful, beautiful um, quilt of all these people that are so very different. None of our lives cross over, I don't think, in any way. Like we're so, so different. Some are rich, some are poor, some are divorced, some have been married forever, some have um, are in the middle of conflict in their marriage, some um, have a, you know, like non-Christian spouse, some have a sort of Christian spouse, um, some are single, some have just become Christians uh, recently, some have been Christians for, you know, decades. So we're very different people, we have different kind of careers or, you know, interests or whatever. But everyone was super connected in this way that everyone fought in very similar ways. And I found it was so beautiful to see the wide diversity, but then see this unity among everyone. And I wanted you to see that. So what I'm going to do in this lesson is share strategies that these leaders did. Some of them wanted to stay private, so I'm just going to keep them all private. I surveyed a dozen people, 10 of them answered. And this is the result of the 10 that answered, okay? In this situation, I took everyone's comments and shuffled them like cards and sorted them out like into categories. So they go into the three categories of preparation, defense, and offense, okay? So I'm gonna read these people's different strategies they use because we're also such different people. I don't want you to think only the way I'm doing it is the one right way. The concepts of what we're talking about, there's a right way as in God's way, but because we're diverse, I think you can learn something from all these different people because they might have something that strikes a chord with you. You're like, oh, I'm going to do that. Okay, so I just think this is really beautiful. I'm gonna read through it real fast. And they're bullet points from elements that were in their emails to me, okay? So in the category of preparation, the people talked about taking communion or being pure of heart. So making sure I am walking 100% with him so I have direct access to him. I take communion every day, take communion Make sure I am pure and holy before him so that no prayer is hindered by any sin I haven't repented of. Taking communion has been key in keeping my heart pure before the Lord. When I take the cup, I am reminded I am covered by the new covenant and the enemy can't harm me or have legal rights in his accusation of me before God. Repent, go through and repent of any unconfessed sin. In the category of knowing his words, reading my Bible so that I know what my authority is in him, not just listening to a pastor say it or tell it to me, but knowing it for myself. Watching Jesus daily in the Gospels, watching his ways, seeking to notice, ponder his words. Life is much easier when each night the Gospels play in my bedroom. 
You can't underemphasize reading and rereading the Gospels. I read the book of Psalms and other passages in the Word. Important Scripture, 2 Timothy 2, 3-5. In the section of being quiet, listening, and following, ponder Him, aware of Him, think about and focus upon Him, inner thoughts escaping into His realm, aware He and they notice, they respond. This realm is such darkness, lies, and death. They are truth and life, to know him and the one he sent. Life is waiting upon isolation, quiet, avoiding distractions of no TV, no radio, very rare film, no newspapers. Learning to be more flexible if the Lord wants to speak with me, teach and lead me in new ways and under more difficult circumstances when and where I have difficulty hearing or seeing him. Letting go, being still, being quiet. In the category of prayer and gratefulness, I pray and relinquish all my concerns, worries, and questions to him. Mention things to him. I literally rely on him to give me strength to keep going. Gratitude, giving thanks for everything in prayer, which means prayer walk dedicated to giving thanks. Always thanking the Father for sending his Son, Jesus, to save me. Constant thanksgiving and praise and worship for what Jesus did for me on the cross. I am still amazed he would save me. I am just so in awe. Grateful in all things, counting the immense blessings the Lord has provided and continues to provide if we ask. Tongues when led. I pray in the spirit and sometimes I just groan with my soul pleading with God for a certain situation. Prayer and full dependency in faith. I ask him to step into my day, my life, thoughts, actions, words, deeds, and my footsteps to guide me in every direction, thought, and step. Reveal to me how to battle today, right now. Teach me and show me what I am coming against and help me to overcome in Jesus' name. I ask him to step into my day, my life, thoughts, actions, words, deeds, and my footsteps. Wait for him to speak, otherwise relax in his presence. I see myself as an authentic Jesus follower and I put myself in the shoes of his disciples when they were being persecuted and ready myself for this. I am prepared to share the gospel of Jesus and also have on my armor daily. I stay vigilant knowing that as long as we're on this earth, attacks will come. I put myself in readiness mode always, ready for the battle. And when the Lord tells me to hunker down and hide in the eye of the storm, I hide with him for he is my strong tower. In the section of defense, this is the first category. Give it to him. What the Holy Spirit has taught me is to hide in the center of the storm, the eye of the hurricane, where it is peaceful with him. Then the storm or the attacks pass. I always go into my secret place and shut the door and let it out to God and pray. I pray for the people that come against me. I pray for our enemies. I do not always pray for my enemies, sometimes I'm just silent about a particular hurtful situation in my prayers. Pour your spirit and anointing over me and my family and property. Please break off any and all chains, yokes, ties, and burdens that have attached or tried to attach to me, my family, my home, and my work. Anything that overwhelms me or questions I cannot answer, I won't dwell on them. I say, I say out loud. I give you my life today. Loose your warring and ministering angels to watch over and keep me, shield me from the darts of the enemy. In the area of fasting, fasting, fasting alongside praying. Fasting for me can be a meal or days. I just do it until I get the okay from God that it's done. He lets you know in the spirit, you feel it. When you need to be fasting, this comes by having a close walk with him. The closer you are to him, the more time you spend with him, the more he speaks to your heart and the more you hear him. When I need to hear from the Lord, I will fast. Since I have a fasted lifestyle already because of food allergies, 
I fast anything that is pleasurable, like in between meals or snacks or certain special desserts, which are very few for me. Anointing. You can anoint. If I'm praying for myself or family, pet, etc., anoint with oil. It is for peace in my home. I anoint all my doorways, TVs, computers, etc. In the area of being alert to the enemy. On guard against this realm of deception. Recognize the spirit if possible, the evil spirit. Taking every thought captive, making it conform to the mind of Christ. I pray for angelic protection for me and my children and all others I intercede for. I can feel when attacks are on the rise against me. The Holy Spirit warns me ahead of time of incoming attacks. When they do come, I compare it to a hurricane blowing in. Um, Holy Spirit has trained me to control my responses. I had to learn this because at first I always tried to defend myself, but now God has shown me our, how our words bring life or death and how we respond is important. When I am praying for protection of others, I will pray each part of the armor as if I am putting it on myself and include them as I am putting it on. Being ever mindful of vain imaginations, the battle is in our minds now more than ever. Worship and rejoicing. Singing hymns from an old hymn book I have really seems to change the atmosphere and the demons flee. Joyful and upbeat music. I read my Bible. I talk to God all day long throughout my day. He is never far from my thoughts. I remember all the things, the blessings, the miracles that he has done in my life. And I am just so thankful. In the category of understanding your authority. After we were done praying, she said to me, Now don't be surprised if you find yourself now under spiritual attack. I got off the phone and I was like, no, that does not have to happen. I prayed against it and God gave me a sound mind not to expect it. I think some people allow themselves to become prey just because they have heard from someone that this could happen. We have been given the power, the words, and the mind to deal with this in a quick, efficient way that does not have to be so wordy. I have found that keeping it simple works. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. In the section of applying your authority, bind all the spiritual forces of darkness. I ask God to remove them so they don't come back to cover me to cover me in the blood of Jesus like a force field that surrounds me wherever I go, a protective bubble, so to speak. But I ask that this is not only for me, but also for the members of my household. I ask God to not let any, <coughs> any evil influences to be in my presence, whether at home, work, etc. I ask that he stop the mouths and shut them up so that they don't speak anything that is inappropriate and not of God in front of me. If I know a specific area of presence, I will seek the Lord on that and pray against that in the specific. Claiming God's promises, standing on what he has said, throwing it back at the devil. Most important, believing his promises to me. Claiming the blood of Jesus over whatever situation I'm praying through, whether it's me, the family, etc. In the section of battle strategies, praying until I get a release over what I'm praying for. And that this is the burden being lifted. This does not always mean I can physically see the prayer answered or the fight done. But I have a peace inside knowing God has won the battle and he's got it. Thanking him for the healing, salvation, or whatever I'm fighting for in the spirit. Having faith, thanking him in spite of not seeing it being done yet, is faith. And he works off of our faith. We might not see, hear, or feel the victory, but in faith, believing him that he will do it, we praise and thank him anyway. Praying scripture and personalizing it. Praying with another strong prayer warrior in agreement. Speaking scripture out loud. In everyday life, when, for example, some thoughts pop into my head that I know is not from him, I rebuke it in his name as well. I might even just say no. I stood up 
and was walking around rebuking the feeling and action that it was not going to happen in his name. What I remember from that experience was I used a very strong, maybe even loud voice. I remember I started off with declaring who I was, the daughter of the king, and that he had no claim over me and that he or it had to leave. While I was saying these things, my arms were moving as if I was declaring and wiping him or it away, sending it away. I ask God to war in the enemy on my behalf. I give you full access to have all that I have and desire and am. Any and all spiritual attacks of the enemy through spirit, witchcraft, soul, ties, and curses. I cast it down at his beautiful feet to resolve. He has way more resources. Now, here's some wisdom from these people, okay? To remember Jesus fights our battles. He never loses. What Betsy said to Corey Ten Boom one day, the safest place we can be is in the center of God's will. I wanted to add to the spiritual warfare list that the enemy uses fear, and we may have a bit but we give it to God. We are not to fear. I've seen that play out in my life. Many times I don't know what to pray. So I ask the Holy Spirit to pray through me and in such a way that is pleasing to the Father. Keep it simple. Document, worship, and sing out prayers. Keeping on, Keep on walking. Ask support. Apply warfare techniques and strategies privately first. Now, I want you to understand who these people are a little bit, okay? These are authentic spiritual warriors, okay? God sees these people as worthy. I want you to listen to some of the elements in their life so that you can say, oh, I'm also worthy, okay? Oh, I, I'm not a blow it because that's what Satan's going to do to you. He's going to be like, well, those spiritual warriors, they might fight us, but you can't. No, you can. Because listen to what these people feel in their hearts. And it's just like you. Some of you are going to be like, that's me. Okay. Authentic Christianity. For those of you that feel alone or too young in the Lord, listen to these seasoned warriors comments. I promise they will encourage some of you. Just to remind you, I was not raised in Christianity. I came to the Lord in 2020 and only then started to educate myself into Christianity. I have no church here and no believers around me. Full faith, something that I am learning and leaning back on. How do we get this? Pray, read, walk out the truth. I am not the best at spiritual warfare, but I am learning and growing in it. I gave myself to the Lord and was born again on November 5th, 2011. That is when I opened my Bible for the first time and really started reading it, and I couldn't get enough. And possibly sharing occasionally, but it is usually rebutted, rejected, attacked, ridiculed, mocked. So I am cautious, treading gently, cautiously, patiently as people. Christians can be cruel, thoughtless, inconsiderate, self-centered. It's easy, the gospel. It's in us, easy to express. I am in constant spiritual battle and laziness, especially in me and my daughter. I get distracted easily and my mind wanders to a hundred different things, especially when I want to pray and commune with God. My husband swears and uses coarse language constantly. It has gotten a lot better over the years. It is part of his normal everyday speech. He even uses the Lord's name in vain. I am a constant prayer for myself, asking the Lord to give me eyes to see them and others as he sees them and to give me his words to speak, not to respond in the same unkind and loving way they do. Learning about the interplay between healing, deliverance, and warfare in areas where I am not fully healed, or submitted to the Lord and or delivered from the adversary that he has can obtain access through spirits of fear. He submitted to the Lord and or delivered the adversary has or can obtain access through spirits of fear, rejection, and witchcraft, mainly in my case, to weaken me, inflict harm, even working through me, etc., 
To maintain newly gained spiritual ground, I'm learning to cover these areas, healing, deliverance, active warfare, simultaneously and consistency. Pride, that's a doozy. It's not me who lives, but he who lives in me. I feel like I am still an infant in this area, for I didn't even know about spiritual warfare just seven years ago. Cry, sometimes that's all I can do. Remembering that tears we sow are stored up and will reap a harvest of joy time. Not warfare per se, but there is a purpose to our tears. Okay, so I thought that was really beautiful to just think about how all these different people, they're really saying the same thing in their very personal ways. Now, I'm going to summarize that, of course, in a graphic because that's what we do here. <laughs> so let me show you the key, okay? The key. The um, lightning symbol is the power of his might, God's might. The bubble with the guy in faith. I wanted to put him some places, but because the way I had to put the graphic together, he couldn't go um, really where he needs to go, but he exists. Um, put on the full armor of God. The ghost is um, versus the spiritual hosts of wickedness. The coat is has a waist belt, so waist with the belt of truth. The um, vest is the breastplate of righteousness. The flip-flop and the Bible is the feet shod with the gospel of peace. The shield and the guy with the uh, walking stick is the shield of faith. The army helmet and Bible is the helmet of salvation and the word of God. The sword with the Holy Spirit is the sword of the spirit. Praying always. The eyes looking is being watchful. The dove is be holy. And then a megaphone with the Bible is be bold speaking the gospel. If you'd like to know where I'm getting this information, it's 1 Peter 1.16 and Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. And you can read those. All right. So in the section of the leader's methods, preparation. Realize you have the authority. Pray privately daily. Pray with others. Focus on praying and serving others. Thankfulness to the Lord. Maintain the progress of spiritual growth. That summarizes what they said. Preparation and defense. This is where it crosses over. It's in kind of both sections. Keep forgiving, regular communion, read scripture, study on warfare, live holy and righteously, anoint the people or places um, being prayed over with holy oil, pray on the armor of God. And then in the area of defense, share the gospel, pray a boundary, resist temptation, pray on the armor of God, and use your observation skills. In the area of offensive war, rebuke the demon, pray down darkness, pray to fuel angels, use the name of Jesus, claim the blood of Jesus over the person or situation, quote scripture at the enemy, claim God's promises at the enemy, in full faith be thankful for the victory without seeing it, pray and focus God's power toward the enemy, pray until released. Be a conduit for God's power. Project God's power and hold it. Okay, so I hope you find that helpful. And um, I'll see you next time.